Hey everybody, what's going on? This is episode 10 of Cook's Corner and today I'm going to be doing a Toronto Maple Leafs debrief on exactly what went wrong with their season. I'm going to focus on four main things that I think need to be discussed with this Leafs team and hope that they can find a solution to the problems they've been having getting out of the first round of the postseason. Now there's no order to the four things I want to discuss today, but the first one I want to bring to the table is Frederick Anderson and whether or not he's the goalie of the Leafs' future. Now there definitely deserves to be some blame for Frederick Anderson on the Leafs having another early exit in the postseason, but there is no way you can convince me that he deserves all of the blame. Sure, the Liam Foody goal, the second goal in Game 5 against the Columbus Blue Jackets, can't go in. That's a save that he needs to make, but you can't convince me that Frederick Anderson is the root of all of the Leafs' problems. Anderson has one year left on his contract with the Maple Leafs and there is no shortage of unrestricted free agent goalies this offseason. Whether it's Robin Lehner, Jacob Markstrom, Braden Holtby, Corey Crawford, Thomas Grice, or Anton Kudobin, there is no shortage of free agents that the Leafs could target if they do decide to trade Freddie Anderson. Kyle Dubas and company definitely have a decision to make in goal for the Maple Leafs in regard to their future and it would not surprise me in the slightest if Dubas decides to let Anderson walk in his free agent year. Moving on to the defensive core of the Toronto Maple Leafs, this is where I think the biggest issues on this team lie and what they really need to do this offseason is figure out the root of these issues and get it fixed because without it, they're not going to be making any noise in the postseason anytime soon. So here's the thing, in theory, the trade for Tyson Berry made a lot of sense for this Leafs team, but when you add a defenseman like that to your back end, you need to stabilize around him because he's a puck mover and he is prone to defensive errors in his zone. Dubas also acquired Cody Ceci last year in the Nikita Zaitsev trade, and it's safe to say that experiment didn't work out either, even though it was seen as more of a cap dump than anything. CC and Barry are both expected to walk as unrestricted free agents, so that leaves two more holes on the Leafs' blue line. Now the next question that needs to be answered is, do you stick with your young kids here and try to develop them and learn with their mistakes, whether that's Rasmus Sandin and Timothy Lilligren, or do you go out into the unrestricted free agent market and try to sign a veteran to try to toughen up your blue line? Now there's also a third option. The Leafs did sign Miko Lettinen, a free agent from Finland, who is expected to play a role with the NHL club next season. But with all that being said, I really do think the Leafs do need some jam on their back end. And I think they're going to go out this offseason and try to get some, whether it's a guy like Mark Borowiecki or Radko Gudis, like Elliot Friedman suggested on the 31 Thoughts podcast. But I also took another look at another name that is an unrestricted free agent this year, and that's Travis Hamanick out in Calgary. And I really think he would stabilize the Leafs' top four and would be a great fit beside Morgan Riley. Up front, I would be shocked if all three of Kasperi Kapanen, Andreas Janssen, and William Nylander are all Toronto Maple Leafs next year. I think there's just too much money tied up to the forward core of this team. The Leafs also do seem to have another good prospect on the way in Nick Robertson, and he'll be on his entry-level deal when he does play with the big club. So I think they do have the luxury of trading one of Nylander, Kapanen, or Janssen to kind of free up some room so they can make moves elsewhere on their roster. When I look at the way this Leafs team is currently constructed, I don't believe there's enough players on this roster that are going to bring you into the fight with them. What I mean by that is when things get tough and hard and physical in the postseason, and you know they do, you need players that are going to go to war for one another, and I just don't think the Leafs have too many of those on their roster as currently constructed. Jake Muzzin's injury was a big hit to this Leafs team because he's one of those type of players that I think does go to battle for his teammates on any given night, especially in the postseason, along with Kyle Clifford, both who do have that cup pedigree from their time with the Los Angeles Kings. It won't surprise me in the slightest if there are some additions in the offseason for the Leafs that are more driven towards this method, and I think Dubas hinted at that during his season-ending press conference. Now there's certainly a lot to digest here in what will be an interesting offseason for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but with all that being said, signing off from Cook's Corner, I'm Zach Cook, we'll see you later.